My name is Gary Emerald with Tentmaker Ministries. The subject in this series of videos is toxic Bibles. Uh, you may have never heard the term before, but uh, when you're done with the series, I hope you will study out what we've put together here for, uh, for you, the audience, and, uh, and familiarize yourself with a, what I think is an extremely important subject, and that is uh, toxic Bibles. I believe that uh, most leading selling Bibles in the English speaking world today contain toxin, contain poison, a poison for your soul, a poison that will not only poison your soul, but the soul of your children as well. Jesus said to the Pharisees, to the religious leaders, to those who had large portions of the Bible memorized. He said to them, you have made the word of God of none effect by your traditions. Think about it. The word of God, people who had, who had Bible memorization programs that make typical Sunday school Bible memorization programs today look uh, pathetic. These people who, who practically had the whole Bible memorized, Jesus said, you've made the word of God, the Bible of no effect by your traditions. And another prophet, Hosea, he said, my people are destroyed, they perish for lack of knowledge. I hope and pray that the information that we're putting together in this video series, Toxic Bibles, gives you knowledge to set you free of a poison that has prevented millions uh, and billions of people around the world from, from seeing the true nature and the true character of God and His true plan of salvation. This particular segment that we're doing right now is on the NIV Bible, the New International Version, produced by a large Christian publishing company called Zondervan. Before I talk about the toxin, the poison in the New International Version, I'd like to go back to perhaps the most famous Bible of all, um, which uh, I guess was one of the main culprits that put this poison this toxin into the Bible translations of today. This translation here, the, New, the King James Bible, was, uh, was very instrumental in allowing or perpetuating the poison that went into our contemporary English Bibles. I want to say that most of the leading translations, English translations, that you find in the Christian bookstore Almost without exception, the leading ones all contain this poison that we're going to be talking about in this series of, uh, of videos. And I mean translations like the King James Bible, the New King James Bible, as we, the, the, talk, the, the, the one we're talking about right now, the NIV, the New American Standard, the NRSV, the Amplified, the New Living Translation, the International Standard Version, the English Standard Version, the New Jerusalem Bible, Peterson's The Message, even uh, the Complete Jewish Bible by uh, David H. Stern. While he cleaned up quite a bit of uh, the poison in his translation, he still left enough of it to kill you pretty, pretty good. And even uh, this new translation that uh, claims to have all these uh, thousands of footnotes and uh, um, uh, marginal readings, the Net Bible, New English Translation, it too is a toxic Bible. Let me show you how complicated this toxin that I'm talking about is. Let me give you, uh, I'm going to deal with, uh, with a particular page in a, uh, a very rare uh, translation uh, of the King James Bible. This is a uh, page that I have in front of me of an original 1612 King James Bible. And this particular page, I think the Holy Spirit, I think God allowed me to, to, to get this page so that I can show you plainly um, and clearly what, what has been going on in our Bible translations. This 1612 page from a King James uh, 
Bible, in Revelation 12, 13, we find something very unusual. We find in the text, it says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the dead and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to his works. So we find the word hell in 2013, and in the margin we find or hell. So for the word hell in the text, we find in the margin or hell. This is obviously a printer's mistake. What's going on here? Why do they have hell in the margin and hell in the text? Obviously, the, the printer meant to put something else in one place or the other. And he, uh, through oversight, he put hell in both the margin and the text. Here's why this problem occurred. The King James Bible translators had a very difficult time with trying to figure out which words in the Bible actually depicted the hell of their tradition and which ones were, were not related. Well, they had a real difficult time finding hell in the Old Testament. The only word that they could possibly conjure up to mean a place of doom and fire and uh, everlasting tortures was the Hebrew word Sheol. The Hebrew word Sheol, according to Jewish rabbis, simply means the place of the dead. In, Christian, in Jewish tradition, the good and the bad and the ugly, everyone went to Sheol. Everyone went to the place of the dead. Jewish Bible translations, um, the Jewish Publication Society that produces the, the Tanakh, uh, they don't have the word hell in their Bible, which is our Old Testament. The word hell does not appear there. But the King James translators who needed hell because their tradition demanded hell, they translated the Hebrew word Sheol 31 times hell, 31 times grave, and 3 times pit. W how did they decide which verses spoke of, of, of a place of everlasting punishment and which places spoke of merely the grave? They, <laughs> I would be interested to find out, to hear the discussions as to when they got together, okay, which, which place to here are we going to call the grave and which place here are we going to call hell? Because it's the same word. Well, in the New Testament, it got even more sticky. In the New Testament, the Greek word Hades is the equivalent of the Hebrew word Sheol. They're the same thing, just two different languages, Hebrew, Greek, Sheol, Hades. Now they had to figure out which places Hades meant hell and which places it just merely meant the grave. Well, ultimately they ended up translating every place where you had the word Hades, every place they translated hell. So the plot thickens here as we go from Sheol to Hades. Remember in Sheol they translated half the times hell, the other half um, grave or the pit. Now in uh, Hades, they translated, the King James Bible translated Hades um, as hell consistently, 11, 12 times. I forgot exactly how many times it was there. But in the New Testament, they added some more words that they also translated hell. Gehenna, the city dump outside the southwest wall that Jesus prophesied that the very people that he was talking to, the Pharisees, might find their own body thrown into hell, the King James Bible says. The Greek word there is Gehenna, which is actually a, a version of the Aramaic. And that word is in the Old Testament too. In the Old Testament, it is Ge Ben Hinnom, which means the sun, the valley of the son of Hinnom. The Jews never translated gay Ben Hinn.